On a scale of one to Andy Sidaris, how dirty will this movie be? Let's see, who directed? Ah, Jim Wynorski. This'll probably be about a seven. Attack of the 50-Foot Cam Girl is a 2022 sci-fi comedy from director Jim Wynorski. 2022? I never do movies this new. Anyway, this movie opens with a giant slappy fight. Hey, you got your kaiju movie in my porn. Foot shots? That's premium tier content, ladies. I definitely think this qualifies as thunder thighs. Of course, this movie is one of those ones that begins with the end. I bet you're wondering how this all got started. Oh god, all that's missing is the record scratch. Bradley's filming his cam girl wife Beverly taking a shower. This is going to be another rough one to edit and not get the dreaded yellow dollar sign. Her shower's an ad for her super fans, of course. Beverly's being nasty to her assistant Fuchsia. More real means more money. More real? Take my word for it. Those basketballs strapped to her chest are the furthest thing from real. How did the scene turn out? It was super hot. Steamy, in fact. The acting here makes Birdemic look like an Oscar winner. Fuchsia brings Bradley his favorite meal, the number two combo platter from McDonald's. Superfans contributed with 12,000 new monthly subs. That's a lot of simps. Beverly is making bank. Well, not cash me outside bank, but still a lot of money. Pretty soon, she'll be selling her bathwater and farts. Beverly's upset because she lost 7,000 subs. I suggest that they all come sub to me. Join my lonely mans. I'll tell you all about the best movie you've never heard of in my sexiest voice. This actress really has the vapid, entitled attitude down, mixed with just the right amount of vocal fry. <laughs> this is ugly. No one has enough money for me to wear that. Who's counting anyways? Besides, I hit like a girl. Hard. Bradley tells her if she wants to regain the lost subs, she needs to do a collaboration with another girl. I never had to clap my butt for legs. He suggests she do a collaboration with Fuchsia. Why not? There's only like five people in the cast. Who else are we going to pick? Beverly begrudgingly agrees. That night, Beverly is drunk. Her last name's Wood, so her fans are called Woodies. Any of you Woodies want to fill me up? Her husband tries to leave, but she convinces him to stay for butt sex. There is enough Cosmo in me to let you do that thing you like. Afterwards, he leaves to attend a meeting. Oh no, hashtags in the movie? Over at the bad visual effects kitty bar, he's there to see Fuchsia, who he's fooling around with. They have a plan to use Beverly to launch Fuchsia's brand and make millions. Okay, it's 15 minutes into the movie, so time for another shower scene. The next day, some scientists are showing Beverly and Bradley their new invention. Turns out these two have been funding research into bioprotein, because eh, that's what was in the script. Would the world's greatest cam girl really go to a meeting with a big stain on her cleavage? They reveal a carrot. Certainly saving a ton of money on visual effects. A hot dog? Yep. You went with a hot dog? The scientists have created self-replicating food. She eats the hot dog and... Hashtag yummers. I give up. It doesn't seem to agree with her. <laughs> Whoa. Bradley helps her to the bathroom. If she streams what happens next... That's attracting an entirely new audience. Dr. Rhodes stays to keep an eye on her. Bradley goes to see Fuchsia so the doctor can, oh God, need to pad the movie, so a musical interlude. Bradley's back at the bar with Fuchsia. Hashtag bummer. Oh, not you two. The next morning, Beverly wakes up and is huge. I think the prop guy was a little off with his scaling. If her toothbrush was this small, she'd be significantly bigger. Beverly and Fuchsia have their first photo shoot. Somehow, Bradley doesn't notice that Beverly is taller than him, or she's standing on a box. Yeah, it's probably a box. Five minutes later, and she's super gigantic. It is absolutely required that I use this sound clip. That's a huge bitch! Wait, so her clothes grow too? Are they made of the same material as Hulk's pants? Not missing an opportunity, Bradley records this for her fans. That night at the bar, Fuchsia tries to go solo early. It's all going well until huge Beverly catches them in the act. Back at the house, Beverly tries to pick up her phone. Wait! Why is she black? She calls the scientists to show them what happened. 
This one scientist is really excited. So hot. This reminds me of the time Hank Pym and Wasp were on vacation and he climbed into her... Um... Ew. The scientists explain her clothing growing. Well, it appears that anything that touches your skin is also affected by the growth enzyme. Oh, sure. The scientists then make her an enormous garbage can mixed drink. Great idea. Get the giant moody girl drunk. Beverly's mad at Bradley, so she storms off. Bradley and the scientists follow her. Fuchsia wants a fight, so she eats all the genetically modified food. So Fuchsia grows instantly. Full moon plug. Fuchsia shows up and the two of them fight. Here's the reason this whole movie exists. After a good few minutes, the girls realize that Brad sucks. The girls decide the only way to make this right is... I can't show you. But I'll let them explain. Death by motorboat. <laughs> the ultimate way to go. The one scientist wants in. He eats the food, grows huge instantly, and somehow has giant drinks. Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> Attack of the 50-Foot Cam Girl was shot mostly in Beverly Hills, California, on a pretty small budget. Way back in 1958, we had the B-movie classic Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. In 1993, there was the remake. And later, we had movies like Attack of the 60-Foot Centerfold and Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader. This surprisingly was made by Full Moon. It doesn't have quite the same B-movie magic as the Puppet Master series. And it's not as good as Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader. Seriously, check that one out. It's a lot of fun. It does have a cameo from model-turned-actress Becky LeBeau, who is in the video for David Lee Ross' California Girls, and, of course, Attack of the 60-Foot Centerfold. I like that they went with scale models for the film instead of CG. They still had some CG, but the end fight was mostly models, which did give the vibe of some old giant monster movies. Shortly after they filmed this, they shot the sequel, Gigantus Battle Attack which they also managed to get out in 2022. Attack of the 50-Foot Cam Girl does seem like the right evolution of the idea, but the movie is just goofy. It never achieves the quality of even the later Sidaris films. Also, all things considered, it was pretty tame content-wise, which was kind of surprising considering the title and the director. I mean, we're talking about the same guy who directed Scared Topless and The Hills Have Thighs. So really, the movie's only about a three on the Sidaris scale. Not Jim Wynorski's best work, but I'll still watch just about anything he directs. Remember, this is the guy who did Chopping Mall. Attack of the 50-Foot Cam Girl is a big chunk of stupid. It's an easy sit. It's only about an hour and two minutes long. With a little more money, this could have been better. I'm not even talking visual effects, just a few script revisions. Oh, and I wasn't a fan of the whole hashtag thing, but somebody might think that's funny. What's more to say about this movie? It's not the best, it's not the worst, but it's got two ladies in lingerie fighting over a scale model of some factories. That's gotta be somebody's fetish. I'm glad Full Moon's still around, and I hope Sorority Babes in the Slime Bowlerama 2 is better than this was. Get your motor running. One old fashioned and a Cosmo. No, make that a peachy cane. Two cold beers coming up. <laughs>